So I saw this article from Tom's Hardware recently talking about how the latest version of Zorin OS hit 1 million downloads just five weeks after it was released, which according to Zorin themselves, broke all previous records. And what might not surprise you is that a vast majority of these downloads came from Windows computers. Now we've already talked about Windows 10's recent end of support and how it has caused a lot of people to start seriously thinking about if they want to stay in Microsoft's ecosystem moving forward. And for those looking at alternative operating systems, Zorn OS seems like an appealing option because it's designed not just for Windows users, but for users of Mac OS and even other Linux distros too. Its user interface is very customizable so you can have a familiar look and feel to whatever system you're already using. Plus, its very low system requirements means that you can run it on older hardware relatively easily, especially something that Windows 11 can't officially run on. So today I wanted to explore this OS to try and see if this is the best Windows replacement out there, or if it's just another look-alike distro that nobody will care about in a couple of years. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So longtime viewers of the channel may remember that I already made a really crappy video on Zorin OS way back in 2016 when version 11 was the latest release. Now we're on version 18 and with Windows 10 going out of support, there's been a lot of renewed interest in distros like this. I've gotten a couple emails and comments from you guys asking me to revisit this and that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. So you can download Zorin OS from their website which I'll have linked down below. And one important thing to note is that there are a few different versions of it. There is a paid pro release, which of course they're going to put at the top of the download page, that contains a whole bunch of extras that you don't get in the base core version that is free to download. There's also an educational release that we're not really going to talk about today because I feel like most people looking at this OS will be interested in one of these two versions. We're going to check out both of them today to see if the pro release justifies the almost $50 price tag, but one thing I noticed right off the bat is that the premium desktop layouts where you can get an interface similar to Windows 11 or Mac OS or Chrome OS or some of these other Linux distros down here are only available in the pro version. And this is something that they advertise on the about page for the operating system. It's actually the first thing they mention here underneath just where the download link is. So this is actually a paid feature, but you do get the standard desktop layouts with the free version. And that does come with a Windows-esque layout, but it looks more like Windows 7, Vista, or XP, which I honestly prefer anyways. The other layouts you get for free are the Windows list-like one, which just refers to the taskbar buttons having labels. You've got a touch-centric interface, and then you have a GNOME shell-like interface. And there is a full comparison chart that shows you exactly what the pro version has over the free one, which in addition to the desktop layouts are some extra applications and tools and artwork and access to technical support. And of course you contribute to the development of the operating system itself. But I feel like the free version is going to be just fine for the vast majority of people. We will be exploring the pro version later on in this video to see what exactly it comes with. But we're going to check out the core version first. So I've got that already installed here. The installation process is nothing special. This distro being based on Ubuntu, it's pretty much exactly the same as the Ubuntu setup process, just, you know, reskinned, and it is a live CD, so you can use it before actually installing it on your hard drive and all that usual stuff. But once you install it on your hard drive and boot up, you get this little welcome thing that comes up that asks you if you want to take a tour. So we'll take a tour. Uh, it tells you where the menu is. This is kind of your start menu, if you want to call it that, as I probably will throughout this video, even though like application menu is probably the correct term. Uh, so yeah, it tells you where that is. And then it immediately asks you, hey, do you want to mess around in Zorin appearance and select a different layout? So again, in the free version, we only get the four. So this is the default layout, uh, but you do once again have the option to show uh, taskbar labels. So you can see, uh, there you go. It also changes the size of the taskbar, makes it a little bit thinner. And then this is the touch centric interface, which just you know gets rid of the start menu and just makes it a full screen interface. Uh, so you can you know navigate through and see all your applications there as well as your desktops. And then the last one is the GNOME style layout, which if you were coming from Ubuntu or another distro that uses GNOME, uh, you'll be pretty you know, familiar with, with how this works. So they do advertise right here that you can get the additional layouts by upgrading to Zorin OS Pro, but we can just hide that. 
Uh, and then of course you have like your theme options for changing the accent color and, and, and the style and all of that. I think I'm actually going to leave this in light mode uh, just for this video, but I will change this back to the default um, layout there. You also have jelly mode, which makes the window, if we turn this on as you move it around, it does that cool kind of blob animation, which I think is pretty neat. You've got options for having a desktop cube when you switch between your desktops. That is done uh, from down here. So if I were to enable that, you'll see uh, that we've got more of a 3D interface going on rather than if you have this off, it's just you know sliding uh, from the left and to the right. And then you have uh, a spatial window switcher. This is for pressing alt tab, you know, that's the default interface. And then here is the one, uh, it kind of looks like cover flow on Mac OS. So yeah, kind of a neat thing. Uh, and then desktop, of course, you can mess around with the icons, the background, uh, your window settings, your interface settings, all kind of your standard stuff that you would see in other Linux distros too. But going back to the uh, Zorin Tour application, if we go to next, this I really like. So it detects that I'm running this in a virtual machine and it asks me, do you want to install VMware tools? So I'm going to say, yes, absolutely. We will get that installed right now. And I'll just put in my password and we'll run through that really quickly. Next up, it talks about connecting your online accounts. If you wanted to, you know, log in with Gmail or with your Microsoft account or something to sync your your mail, uh, there is of course a default mail app and kind of all your standard, you know, productivity stuff. So you've got that, and this is kind of neat. If you have an Android phone, they have this Zorn Connect application for syncing uh, notifications between your phone and your computer. You can send files between the two, even control playback, and use your phone as a mouse and keyboard, which I think is pretty neat. Uh, and then they tell you about the software store. This is the same exact software store that you have in Ubuntu. It's just the GNOME uh, thing. So yeah, that's in here. And that's it for the tour. So we'll close out of that. And uh, after using this for a little bit off camera, I have to say the layout does a really good job at mimicking windows. I mean, the start menu has two columns, which is my preferred start menu. As I kind of said earlier, I do like this one over even the Windows 10 default one. I still use a third party start menu program on my Windows 10 systems because I just don't really like the Windows 10 one. The Windows 11 one I think is a little bit better, but I still prefer this layout. Another minor detail that I appreciate is when you have an application running, it will have a little line underneath it, just like in Windows 10, which is kind of neat. Although the only thing different here in Zorin is that that only appears on whatever your active window is. If I were to launch something else like Brave, which is the default web browser, you'll see the file manager will change to just having that little dot underneath. So yeah, we'll go ahead and close out of this. Another cool thing is app pinning. You have a similar UI that you see in Windows 11. When you drag a window up here to the top of the screen, you got all these little boxes that you can uh, drag it into to pin it to a specific area on the screen. So maybe we wanna do that. I'll open up Brave and we'll pin it you know, over here and then open up the software center, maybe pin that down here in the corner. Going back into the applications menu, I do want to just briefly scroll through the software just to give you a list of everything that uh, is on the system by default. Something that I think is neat is Windows app support. This is basically a shortcut to uh, downloading Wine from the software marketplace. This is not a, a feature that uh, Zorin heavily promotes, which I think is great because like I always say when switching to Linux, I think it is uh, better to find alternatives to Windows software that you're already using rather than trying to go into it with the expectation that you're going to be able to run all of your Windows software. But if you had a Windows program that you couldn't find an alternative to that you needed to continue using, I would definitely recommend trying a Linux distro like Zorin out on another computer or in a virtual machine and testing that program before committing to ditching Windows because, I mean, that would definitely suck. Uh, also, I think that the logo here looks like the bootcamp logo from Mac OS, so let's hope Apple doesn't have a fit over that. Uh, we'll go ahead and minimize this while it is installing and close out of these other applications. Going back into the start menu, as I'm going to continue to call it, most of these applications are uh, just things that you'll find in other distros that utilize GNOME, so there's nothing really special there. You do have LibreOffice, which I think is a great inclusion uh, and is a pretty capable alternative to Microsoft Office. I have used this on my main computer and plenty of other systems in the past as well. But yeah, the only Zorn-specific things are the connect 
Act application and the Appearance application that we just were in earlier. However, the Pro version of Zorin OS has a whole bunch of additional applications included in it, and this is pretty heavily advertised on the website too. They talk about having over $5,000 worth of professional software. Or, no, because you have to read this a little bit closely, alternatives to over $5,000 of professional software. I gotta say, this I'm not really a fan of, having this part in bold here, because that's like what I read, you know, what I noticed the first couple times, until I saw that, oh, it's talking about alternatives to over $5,000 of professional software. So you're not getting $5,000 worth of value, you're getting alternatives to things like Microsoft Office, uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, and some of the other Adobe Creative Suite applications. And you see that next to each of these individual entries, they have a price. And I guess when you add all of these up, you get to over $5,000 worth of professional software that Zorin OS has alternatives to. So this wording is not incorrect. I just don't really like it because, you know, it kind of like, if, if you're not reading this closely, which yes, you should do to be fair, uh, it kind of, you know, might read like, oh, I'm getting over $5,000 of professional software when you're not actually getting anything that costs any more money. All of the software that comes in Zorn OS Pro is completely free to download. Here's a list of all the stuff that comes in the Pro version. It's all free software, so you can just download all this stuff in the free version of Zorn OS or on any other Linux distro. But I guess it is nice that you just have all this stuff bundled in here. Here. I mean, you can see the program list is much larger here in the Pro version. We've got things like Audacity and Blender and Darktable and GIMP and Handbrake. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And I'm not saying that any of this is like bad software or anything. I mean, I'm using Audacity right now to record the audio for this video. Uh, but again, you're not getting anything of additional dollar value with all this stuff being added. I mean, sure, I guess it'll save you a lot of time having to download it yourself. But again, the way that it's kind of presented on the website, I'm just not really a big fan of. Of course, what they also talk about on the website are the additional layouts that you get in the Zorn Appearance application. So here's the original form, and then we've got these uh, eight ones down here. So we're going to just go through each of them individually. So this first one is the, uh, I think this is the elementary OS uh, kind of themed desktop layout. So you have a dock down here. You have that same full screen app menu that we saw in the just standard GNOME-esque uh, interface. And then you have your little menu up here for accessing your profile folders and, you know, the software store and settings and all of that. And then, you know, your kind of just menu bar, like task tray thing going on up there. Uh, we'll go back in here. This one is the Windows 11 uh, style theme where you have the start menu and task bar centered. And I honestly kind of like this version of the start menu too. It's just like a pop out apps list. You can scroll through and you have a search bar up here. You've got uh, your, you know, user controls over here for locking the screen and logging out and your power controls over there. Everything else, though, appears to be exactly the same as just the default Windows 7 layout. I mean, you can see the taskbar is exactly the same size as well. It just moves everything to the center. Now, this one here just moves the start menu over to the left side along with the uh, desktop switcher, but it keeps the apps in the center. Everything else is the same, though. You have this one that moves the bar over to the left side of the screen. So it's like a side dock interface like you have in Ubuntu or even, you know, Mac OS. You can configure it this way as well. I'm just having the, the dock over to uh, one side of the screen. You have this one, which is more of like a Windows Classic style menu. So, you know, it's just a single column. You can go into each of these different categories uh, to view all of your applications. You have a search bar down here. And the task bar is, I believe, the same exact size as it is in uh, the free desktop layout that has the labels on the items in the task bar. Although one thing I'm noticing is it seems like they got rid of the desktop switcher uh, button there in this layout. So that's been removed from the taskbar anyways, and it seems to increase the size of these buttons a little bit. So uh, yeah, but the main thing is the different menu you have. You've got this one, which this looks very similar to this first one that we took a look at in the set of the new ones. 
it just moves the app launcher up here to the top of the screen because you see it gets rid of it there and then now you go up here and you get like that windows 11 style menu that we saw in uh, these two interfaces here and it also looks like it moves around the yeah this like trash can goes away and yeah but the the dock itself appears to be exactly the same Next up is this one, which if I had to guess is kind of going to be like a Windows 10 style. If we go into the applications menu, you've got your uh, like user folders and everything here on the left and then your applications here on this right side. Although in Windows 10, you know, that would be just different pinned tiles and stuff. So it's not exactly the same thing. This actually, now that I think about it, um, looks like Linux Mint. It kind of reminds me of that interface. You can see that the taskbar though, like if we switch back to this one here, Actually, it doesn't look any different going between these two. The only thing that changes is the menu. And then last but not least, you've got this one, which I believe is the Windows 11 style start menu, just with the taskbar functioning more like a dock in the center of the screen, which I imagine as we launch applications will grow and you know eventually touch the two edges here uh, on the side of the desktop so uh yeah those are the eight additional desktop layouts that you get with zorin os pro and i think this begs a very important question is it worth paying 50 dollars for this operating system just to get some additional layouts all this free software bundled in here you also get some uh, desktop backgrounds that you don't normally get in the free version there are 15 extra wallpapers in here uh, so i mean that's nice and then of course you also have the technical support and the fact that you are just supporting the development of zorin os so is all of that worth 50 dollars to you i mean you're gonna have to decide that for yourself but of course the nice thing about linux is you can literally do everything that i've shown you today in this paid version of zorin os for free through other alternative means. I mean, there are plenty of ways to theme your Linux installation to look like Windows 11 or Windows 10 or Mac OS or practically any other operating system. I mean, we've taken a look at a few customization packages for Linux on this channel before. I really think that the main reason you would be buying a license for this operating system is to help the development of it for the foreseeable future. I mean, according to Zorin's website, they are funded entirely by the community. From what I've seen, there aren't any advertisements on this website. They seem to rely on donations and purchases of Zorin OS Pro. But for the vast majority of people, especially if you're a newbie to Linux and are considering switching to this operating system, there's no need to buy the pro version. You would be just fine using the free one. And so that's what I would definitely recommend if you wanted to uh, try out Zorin OS. But I will repeat something that I've said plenty of times in other videos about Linux. Uh, anytime that I'm recommending a new distro to somebody, I always say to go with one of the mainstream offerings. But I do think that Zorin OS, while it's definitely not on the level of something like Ubuntu and Linux Mint, it at the very least is a few steps above some of the other Windows lookalike distros out there that are, in my eyes anyway, more like hobbyist projects. They're not something that has been around for a while. There's not really a clear roadmap for the future. Zorin OS has been around since 2009. It's got more of a user base. They seem to be pretty consistent about putting new versions of it out. So if it was between Zorin and one of those other distros, I would definitely have to pick Zorin OS. But I'm curious what you guys have to say, especially if you're a current user of this operating system. Is this something that you see yourself using for the foreseeable future? Or are you maybe thinking of switching over to a more mainstream distro or just another operating system entirely? I'd love to know what you guys have to say, but that is pretty much going to wrap it up for this little demonstration of Zorin OS. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up get subscribed maybe consider becoming a patron or a channel member to get early access to these videos before anybody else but either way i just want to thank you all so much for watching and i will see you in the next video